Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today, we're gonna to try something a little bit different than we normally do. Normally, we'll start from very absolute scratch as much as possible, but I found it a little bit easier in this one to focus on the topic at hand and not go into all the details of how do we do each of the steps along the way. You can always check out the entire GitHub repository, link in the description, to see how everything is set up but I am gonna focus this video on the World Space Health Bars, not on how did we get to the point where we can implement World Space Health Bars. For those of you looking for just a quick answer of how do we do this, we're gonna create a canvas, change it to the type World Space. We're gonna create a progress bar that we did in a last week's video actually, so if you don't know how to make a progress bar, check out that one. We're gonna use that progress bar to represent the life based on min max health and decrease that progress bar as the enemy loses life. We're gonna use a prefab for our enemies that has that health bar in it. And whenever we spawn those enemies, we're going to parent that health bar underneath the canvas so that way it renders and make that health bar follow the agent as it moves. We'll also optionally enable something to make the health bar look at the camera because sometimes it looks a little bit funny if you don't have the camera positioned the right way and you have the health bar just following the agents. It sometimes it's kind of hard to see them. We're gonna do all of that and demonstrate it with what more fun thing than click to explode our nav mesh agents. There's a couple of previous videos that I'm building on on this one that if you want the full explanation of how they work, there'll be links to those videos in the description. All those also have the full code in GitHub repository, so you can check out those as well. I'm pretty excited about this one, so let's hop in and check it out. Before we go any further, I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people and add value to more people. If you wanna join this esteemed lot, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose which support tier you're most comfortable with and start getting some of the cool perks like getting your name up here on this section and getting a voice shout out starting at the awesome supporter level. Speaking of those awesome supporters, I have Raphael, Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, and Autumn K. I'm so grateful for your support, thank you. How we have the scene set up, we have an agent spawner that will spawn some number of agents at a spawn rate of two, that means two agents per second. They're gonna spawn some agent prefab and we already have this health bar canvas that's just not used so far. If we take a look at the spawned agent prefab, we can see that it's a nav mesh agent with a random position mover script and an enemy script. The random position movers are just gonna have the agents walk around so that way they're moving. And the important thing on the enemy is that they have some health. The final thing for us to look at really fast is that we have a click explosion variant. This comes from the Unity Particle Pack. It's the big explosion. It just doesn't loop like the big explosion prefab does. The Unity Particle Pack is not included in this repository, but you can import it from the asset store and this prefab variant will automatically hook itself up. How do you use this click explosion variant, you ask? On the main camera, I have a click to explode script that will, anytime I left click, hit up to 25 enemies within a 10 unit radius on the default layer doing up to 100 damage down to as little as 10 damage. If we click play, we'll see wherever I left click, this explosion spawns and eventually agents will stop moving and disappear after they've died. But it's a little bit hard to tell because we don't have any health bars. If I readjust the screen and select an enemy, you can see their life. This one starts at 100. If I left click near it, we have 58 life and then negative six, so they stop moving and die. This is a great example of why we might need world space health bars so we can show the health of all these agents in a graphical format for our players. We have a visual studio starting with the enemy script. In here, not a lot's going on. It implements the eye damageable interface that has on take damage. And anytime that we click to explode, we're looking for the eye damageable component and triggering the on take damage function based on how far away from the explosion we are. That's where you see the health comes in and then we call die and disable the agent. And on died, we just, after a small delay, destroy the game object. So to show the health, what we need is a progress bar. I'm gonna build on last week's video and use the exact same progress bar we implemented there and do a small enhancement there to allow us to have different colors displayed based on how far the progress has gone. So we'll add a private serialized progress bar, call it health bar. To tell how much life we've lost, we need to keep track of what was our original health. So I'm going to add a private float max health and on awake, I'm going to assign that to health. I'm calling it a float because I don't want to do integer division whenever I'm setting the progress. On take damage, We'll set the health bar progress with health bar.set progress 
health divided by max health. This is where we're avoiding that energy division by having the max health as a float. And I'll pass the speed as three because I want this to be a relatively fast animation. And what that means is this will be about a third of a second that it takes to update the health bar position. Now at the bottom of the enemy class, let's add a public void setup health bar because our enemy should be responsible for setting up their own health bar. We'll add a public void setup health bar that accepts a canvas canvas and a camera camera in here, we'll say healthbar.transform.setParent to be the canvas.transform. Since we're using the UnityEngine.UI for our progress bars, they have to be parented under a canvas for them to render. The second part about the camera is an optional thing we're going to talk about in a little bit. The important thing here, though, is that we're going to assign the camera reference of that face camera based on this camera. So we'll do if healthbar.trygetComponent face camera out face camera face camera. We'll do face camera dot camera equals camera. That's a lot of cameras. We're assigning the camera reference on the face camera script to the camera that is passed into the setup health bar function. Now that we have a health bar that's not parented under this object, whenever we destroy this game object, the health bar will also not be destroyed. So whenever we call the on died function, we need to make sure we destroy that health bar as well. So let's go up there and say destroy health bar dot game object, passing in a random value. But this actually makes them destroy at different times. So I'm going to refactor that really quickly to say float destroy delay equals random dot value destroy game object destroy delay and health bar destroy delay. That way they get destroyed at the same time. Finally, let's look at the agent spawner. Since this is where the agents get spawned, we're going to need a reference to that health bar canvas and the camera to make sure that we can call setup health bar with the correct arguments. So far, the agent spawner doesn't have a camera. So let's add a private serialized camera camera. And you'll remember from earlier, we already have that health bar canvas. All this is doing so far is spawning agents at a specified spawn rate somewhere on the nav mesh. Most of this code isn't important for what we're talking about in this video, but at the bottom where we have private I enumerator spawn agents, that's where we're setting up the enemy. In here, there's only one line of code that we need to add, and that's agent.get component of type enemy dot setup health bar, passing in the health bar canvas and the camera. That's all well and good, but I did promise you that we we're gonna make an enhancement to the progress bar to allow it to show different colors based on how far into the progress it's made, because probably we don't want a green health bar if the enemy's almost dead. Maybe in that case, it should be red. To do that, we're gonna use a gradient. So we'll add a private gradient color gradient and we'll serialize that field. And all the way at the bottom where we're animating that progress, whenever we're updating the progress image fill amount, we're gonna set the progress image dot color to equal color gradient dot evaluate, which will evaluate the gradient at a specified time between zero and one. Very convenient since we have our time also going from zero to one. In there, we're going to evaluate with one minus progress bar dot fill amount. It kind of makes sense, at least in my brain, to set up the color gradient to start on the left side with green going to yellow to red. If we set it up that way and just provide the fill amount, it'll go backwards where at time zero, it will be red and go over to green, which is kind of the inverse of what we want. That's why we're using one minus. I'm going to copy paste this line right after the while loop has completed, because remember, if we have the speed too high, maybe we will undershoot it where it doesn't quite reach that progress. So we're going to make sure whenever that progress bar dot fill amount equals the progress, we also update the color to be the color gradient at that particular fill amount. If we hop back over to the Unity editor and open up our spawned agent prefab, the first thing I want to do is show the health bar. So just for now to show what's happening, I'm going to create a canvas and parent the health bar underneath that canvas. I want to really emphasize that you should not do it this way, where every agent has their own canvas and their own health bar underneath their own canvas. There is some overhead that comes with having a canvas. If you have dozens or hundreds of agents running around, all of them with their own canvas, you'll experience some pretty significant overhead from having these canvases. That's why we're setting it up where there's a shared health bar canvas that the agent spawner knows about, and we're parenting our health bars under that one. That way we only hit the canvas overhead one time instead of one time per agent. If we look at the health bar's rec transform, we can see that it's only of width 1.5 and a height of 0.5. That's because we're using a world space canvas. 1.5 is 1.5 world space units. Usually on the UI, you're talking about pixel sizes or some other unit of measurement that is not world space units. We see that everything still works the exact same here. And on the gradient, as I was talking about a second ago, for me, it makes more sense to go green, yellow, red. That's just my preferred way of thinking about it. If you prefer to go red, yellow, green, then on the progress bar, you could just pass in the fill amount and structure your gradients that way. Assuming you're following along though, you're gonna to wanna to set it up exactly this way where it starts from green, goes to yellow, goes to red. I'm using 20% increments here. The progress bar image is just this image that we have right here on the health bar itself. The border is a child of this health bar because I want to render on top of that fill. 
Finally, let's hook up some references in here. We'll drag the health bar to the enemy health bar reference. On the health bar, I will drag the target to be the agent itself. Because remember, this health bar is not going to stay parented under the agent. It's going to go under the canvas and it needs to know what it should be following. And I have it following 1.5 units above that agent. That way it stays a little bit above their head. I also have this face camera script that's currently disabled. I'm going to go ahead and enable that and then save the prefab and return to the scene view. We'll take a look at the world space canvas because I haven't really talked very much about that. On the canvas, all I did was change the canvas render mode to be world space instead of screen space. I've then rotated the canvas 90 degrees on the X axis so it will be flat and I can position it directly above the level. Honestly, the positioning of it doesn't matter too much, but I find this to be more reasonable whenever I'm doing my workflow because I know what's going to go on this canvas is going to be directly above these agents. So putting the canvas there just makes kind of logical sense. If you don't position it here, it still works just fine because we're moving these progress bars in world space on a world space canvas. Also remember that since we have world space canvas mode, all of the units that we are talking about here are in world space units instead of pixels. So having a 1920 by 1080 rec transform is actually huge. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down to something more reasonable that fits my level. Then I'll drag the camera reference to the agent spawner and we'll go ahead and click play. We'll see that the agents spawn, the health bars are following our agents and looking at our camera all the time. And we can actually tell how much life all of these agents have now. We have red whenever they're really low. We have the kind of orangey color whenever they're kind of middle of their life and green whenever they're full. What I'm going to do is open up the agent again and disable the face camera script just to show you how it looks if we don't have it doing that and why I prefer it to face the camera. If I just disable that, save the prefab and click play one more time, we'll see that the health bars are aligned to the top of our agent still following them around, but they're a little bit harder to see based on the location of my camera. Depending on how you have your game set up, this may be fine and may work well. If I have a fixed perspective camera that's positioned on top of the game like this, maybe it's fine and it looks okay. And you don't need all those extra updates making the transforms look at that camera. If you're going to have it where the camera can move though, I find that the facing camera script is very helpful to make sure that the player can always see these health bars and can tell how much life each object has. This is of course a design decision for your game, so you can play with either option and see which one works the best. That's the great part about that script is we can just disable it or remove it altogether if we don't want that functionality. So that's pretty cool. We have world space health bars following our agents. Whenever they take damage, the health bar goes down in an animated fashion changes color as they get lower in life and eventually they both get destroyed. I want to take a second to recap some of the important pieces of this video just to make sure those are really emphasized. First one, as always, whenever we're using objects that get recycled or reused constantly, you need to be using an object pool. I've got two videos on object pooling. One if you're using Unity 2021 or higher using the native object pooling support. And one if you're using an older version, like a current version that's not in the text stream, how you can implement your own custom object pool that does basically the same thing. Number two is the really critical thing is the canvas needs to be a world space canvas. I personally like to position it on top of the level because that makes it really obvious that's what this is for. It's the health bar canvas. It's right there and there's gonna be stuff floating around in that general area. Whenever we're using world space canvases, you need to make sure that the units are world space units, not pixel values. If you have something like 100, that's huge in world space, but is actually relatively small on the UI, generally speaking. Remember, we explicitly have a single canvas that is rendering all of the health bars, because if we have an individual canvas per agent, there's some overhead associated with each of those canvases. And while that does work, you get really bad performance compared to this solution that we implemented today. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow reach more people and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday and I'll see you next week.